cracking. You already know what time it is. It is Mo Sports TV. Yes, sir. What is it? Uh, what? He said, what did Andy what do? What did Andy do? Oh, what did brother. Andy do? This guy's gone for one week and he's already blaming people for shit. But we are here. It is what? What's today? The 6th? June 6th? 6th? 6th, 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 6th. All right, chill Shout out. out Drake. Nah, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm here with Matt G. What's Big Ed. And we're here to talk some NBA finals. You already know. A lot we're of finals to, talk. A lot of finals talk. I mean, talk. it's not just finals talk, though. There's a lot going on in the sports world today, which is mm-hmm. kind of crazy for being it, it being June 6th, right? Like, not often do you have stuff in the NFL, MLB, you know, golf. Like, mm-hmm. hey, big day for golf. And also the NBA, obviously. Like, there's there's so much to talk about today. And um, I'm excited to get cracking. So let's kick things off. Obviously, NBA finals. What do we think of those first two games that we have witnessed? I mean, obviously we're tied up one one, but what are your biggest takeaways after you know Denver dropping one at home where they have the craziest record in the league? What, what do you think of that? They have the craziest Well, me personally, I, I've said what I said, what I said, what I said when we first started going over this this uh Oh, my gosh. All right, my bad. Here we go. I said what I said when we first got into the finals preview, right? I said, yes, I think the Nuggets are going to win. Yes, I think the Nuggets are the better team. But <clears throat> it's just sweet with the heat. Yeah. No, at the same time, it really isn't. I mean, you see that, like, even Jimmy Butler didn't have his best game in game two, and they're still coming out and able to get a dub. Now, I know I disrespected Bam Adebayo pretty crazily. I still not moved too much. I can't lie to you. But I do think that, you know, it's pretty impressive what the Heat are able to do, especially Eric Spolstra with these guys. I mean, they played eight guys in game two, five of which were undrafted. That is incredible, and I, I got to give him some flowers for that. Plus years now, when I told her undrafted shit. What do you mean? I mean, they still got to get some form of flowers for that, no? Or at least Spo? Like, what? Yeah, Spo does, yeah, sure. But, I mean, I still, I don't know. I respect what they're doing. Gabe Vincent, you know, Max Struess. These are guys that are finally stepping up and finding a role within the league. Like, it's good for them. Nuggets are sick. Small Murray has to step up. And DJ well, goes. I feel like that's a big reason as to why the Heat won game two because Spolstra figured out that it doesn't really – like, Jokic is going to do him no matter what. He's going to get his 30 to 40 a game in this kind of series. But where the game is won and lost, it's going to be Jamal Murray and how they can contain Jamal Murray. Yeah. Jamal Murray puts on 25 points. You're cooked. You're done. I'm telling you that right now. And you better not let MPJ get 20. Well, that's better not let uh, Caldwell Pope get something. MPJ can't be shooting. Bruce Brown, Eric Gordon. I mean, MPJ. Bro, that's just crazy. crazy. <laughs> he doesn't pass the ball for shit. I've no. seen a play where it was like four people open. Yeah. Like, he still shot the ball. Yes, balls. I know exactly what you're talking this about. That mid-range nuts. fadeaway, yeah, bro. Like, it was absurd. And I don't, like, not going to lie. He does get up. Like, one thing, he is 6'9", and he gets probably a foot and a half off the ground for every jump shot. So, like, he's able to get above almost every defender in the NBA. But you got to pass the rock, bro. I mean, your nickname is literally Michael. The possession ends here, Porter. Like, that's nuts. That's nuts. Yeah, he's not. I mean, he's good, he's though. Sure like, he, he just can't be 0 for 6. Like, you, the Nuggets, I said it in a couple weeks ago. The Nuggets, if they're going to win this series, it's going to be because of their wing depth. And you're out here just literally shitting the bed in the end. I mean, it's, yeah, 2 of 8. And then he went 0 for 6 for 3, I believe. It was like, you can't do that, bro. You, you can't. Well, that's Michael Porter Jr.'s game, though, at the end of the day. He doesn't take a lot of dribbles. It's either he, he has, like, a Clay Thompson kind of game where he just – it's he's going to put the ball on the floor and take it straight to the rack where he's shooting. Like, he doesn't have much of a bag as far as dribbling. He doesn't have much of a playmaking bag. I guess. So that's, that's, that's what comes with it, you know. But I still think he's a great player. And I don't think that happens again, though. Right, I don't think it happens think again. Happens. I think it's going to be Nuggets of six. Nuggets of six, though. I think the Heat get one at home, mm. and after that, so. yeah. I mean, it just doesn't. I can't see a scenario where the Nuggets and Jamal Murray specifically don't find a way to, you know, step up in the end. It just doesn't make sense. Like, I really don't think that so they're just going to lay down and die. I mean, the Heat are good, but like, 
Come on, you know what I mean? The Nuggets, the Nuggets coach is a good coach too. <laughs> oh, Michael Malone? Yeah, absolutely. Nah, he's definitely like that. So, I mean, it doesn't surprise me that, you know, they're running into stumps, I guess you say, or obstacles being that you're going up against Eric Spolstra. So, yeah. I mean, it doesn't really, it doesn't really phase me. I think they're going to find a way to adjust. Well, I, I like you said, Mike Malone's a great coach, but I feel like Spolstra is the best coach in the league, and he's always going to make adjustments. And yeah, the Heat might lose game one of that series, but game two, he comes out with adjustments. Like, look, all right, we're going to make let Jokic do his thing, but uh, guess what? Everybody else ain't doing shit. Yeah, cutting off the number two is really important, especially if a guy like Jamal Murray who could just light you up, especially from deep. I mean, going in and being able to take him out of the game, that's that's massive. So uh, I think they're going to adjust, but I think it's also a big key now for the Heat that they got to try it to at least do that, you know, off the rip every game. Because if that's what you're able to do, um, you know, it's going to change the dynamic of the whole series. I agree. I agree. That's the key to the series, in my opinion, from seeing the first two games is Jamal Murray. That's that's who's going to win you the game. I mean, win you the series, that's who's going to lose you the series. And Aaron Gordon didn't have a good game two either, I don't think. He's, right? not, he's not expected to have. He's not expected to have more than offensively, 15 off, points. Offensively, offensively, yes. But he even he on still the had boards. a decent game defensively, too. I mean, it was, what, 108-111? It wasn't a crazy high-scoring game. I mean, yeah. I mean, no, nah, I, I think he has to do his thing on the boards in order to really make himself effective. And that's what he's done all season. I mean, he was able to do that against the Lakers, who are a much bigger and deeper team yeah. than he. So now I think as long as, I mean, Bam out of bio, I guess he had a good game too, but I just can't see him dominating a series. I mean, he had a good, he had a good game, you know, he fans. A good enough game for Goni to be in my DM talking about good team loser. <laughs> I was like, bro, he had 41, bro. Bro, that's and that's what I'm trying to say that is that, yeah, even though the Heat won and Bam had 20 and 10, he still had 41 dropped on his fucking head bro, at yeah. the end of the day. Like, but the thing is, he's not the reason why they won. I saw a statistic that uh, the Nuggets have never won a playoff game. Jokic scores more than 40 points. So it's really the games that he's giving you 25, 15, and 12. Those are the ones yeah, that you have to be worried about, not the ones where he goes crazy. So I don't know. It might be key to just let him score. I mean, I don't know, though. It's, it's a two-time MVP we're talking about. Yeah, that's what I was saying like two weeks ago. He kills people off those assists. He don't really kill people off. Oh, yeah. 0-3 oh, when he scores 40. Exactly. Exactly, and that's something to be a little bit concerned about. The other guys just can't step up in that case without him having to set, put them on a platter. So, I so, so what do we think happens when they go back to Miami? I mean, they're going back to the Miami tomorrow. The game is, what do we have for the next two games? Cooked. They're going to cook them, I think. You, yeah. think, you think the Nuggets we'll are going to... Actually, we'll see after the first quarter. We'll see that. After the first South quarter, we'll... wraps, I think bro. it's another split. Yeah. I think it's going to go 1-1 one, one again in Miami. Yep. It's going to be 2-2 two, two going into Denver, and that's when Denver's going to win two straight. Yeah. It's going to go 1-1, one, 1-1, one, 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 Denver, Denver. Yeah, in my opinion. Nuggets will get this first one tomorrow, I believe. Yeah, and then Miami's going to come back again. And answer. And answer. Yeah. Yep. 21 points, 4 assists. KCP legacy game coming tomorrow, 21 okay. points, 4 assists. Jeez. Anybody on that Denver team can snap at any point, including KCP. Jeff and Green, Bruce Brown. That's a, I think that's the deepest team in the NBA. That's the four. That's KCP. KCP? Yeah. Not even. Nah. He's probably be like fifth, six. Oh, yeah, fifth. Yeah. I feel like Bruce Brown's better. No, no, no. I no. like Bruce Brown, bro. His game is pretty dynamic. You got your ball, Burry, Yoki, and PJ, Eric. I say Casey. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Not me. <laughs> KCP's like six to me. I mean, I don't. Is KCP really a difference maker to us like that? In Not a big one, but he's a good role yeah, player. No, but in comparison to the other guys on his team, you know, I'm taking yes. obviously Murray, Jokic, MPJ, Aaron Gordon. And then I'm taking, obviously Bruce Brown, and I I don't know Jeff Green or M, or KCP. Who are you? Who are you playing? You guys are I'll put KCP over Jeff Green. 
Yeah, Jeff Green's got some defense. Yo, Jeff Green be playing ball, bro. Jeff Green's trying his ass off, bro. He's trying to be the next BC. (laughs) I fuck with Jeff Green, man. I can't. can't He's an old head, but he get it in, bro. He gets it in every time, man. Yeah, yeah. KCP's been more consistent. Mm. I don't know, because I feel like KCP's the guy, when he's cold, he's cold. And he might be damn near unplayable when he's cold. So, I don't know about that one, but... I'm taking Bruce Brown above all. Uh, that's all I know. That's all I know on that team. He was fired up for it. Never mind. Yeah. All right. I'll say all I say. And and Khalif, you're cor- you're correct on that. My Miami- anybody on Miami can snap off to Caleb Martin, Gabe Vincent, Strews. They also were known to get cold though. Harrow's back. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's not no. back. No. Yeah. So when does he come back? Is he gonna come back? Nah, he has like he's still a little bit concerned with how his hand is feeling. Oh, he's cooked for the series. Fuck him. Yeah. Yeah. If he's saying he's still concerned, it's over. He's no, not coming back. It's yeah, it's still swelling, and he's concerned about the longevity of the his like series in the end. You know, so I don't know. I don't think he's coming back. Bro, it's the NBA fucking finals. He doesn't want to. I don't give a fuck. Team chemistry. Too. That, that and that, that was a big concern of mine when we were talking about Harrow last week. I said if he comes back, he can either take the team to a whole nother level and take this series to seven, or just fuck the whole series up with his chemistry and his ability to jack the ball here and there. Yeah, I think the biggest thing though for the Heat is just like seeing that you're able to win a game when Jimmy isn't playing at his best. That's he really my biggest thing. His, his, first, his first nine games were literally ten times better than his past nine games of the playoffs. And I mean, that makes me upset knowing that, you know, the Nick let him get the second half of those good games. But, no, I don't know. Well, I still think Nug- Nuggets and Six. I think we're all going Nuggets and Six right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but. Hey, like I said, seven. ain't shit sweet with the Heat, man. Yeah, it it, it, it could definitely be. go seven. And honestly, the Miami Heat can win this series in seven, especially after seeing what happened in game two. Ain't shit sweet. Six series is not going to seven. I don't know if that. It's probably Ernest. <laughs> <laughs> All that Ernest him, is a Nuggets fan. No, yeah, well, he's he a Heat. Spurs and Heat. Spurs and Heat. All that Hemi talk, Jimmy's going to retire without a ring. I don't know. I mean, I got to, like, even if he does, I respect Jimmy. I respect Jimmy's career nonetheless. I mean, you're looking at a guy who doesn't have, bro, his his wingspan is six feet. That's so minimal for an NBA player. He's not oversized like that, and he's just got it the hard way. I don't know. I just respect Jimmy's game beyond just, like, what he's done on the court. Obviously, his feats are incredible, the way he's been able to elevate the Miami Heat the past couple seasons, but... The way he got there was like, I don't know, it's some real shit. No, nah, I, I fuck with Jimmy, but like, the glaze is crazy, bro. <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell y'all right now, he's the, best the glaze is like, fucking yeah, crazy. Yeah, when people, it comes to Jimmy Butler right now, it's, it's the yeah. dick eat is nuts right now. It's, it's crazy. Like, he hasn't put up, like, he, he has his game where he puts up 30, 35 here and there, but like, if you look at his stat sheet, like he hasn't had a triple double, he hasn't had a forty plus point game, he hasn't had any of these things in the later rounds. So like, it's not even close to the greatest fucking basketball the playoff mainstream. basketball performance ever. Like, get the fuck the out of here. Needs, get the fuck out of here, please. The mainstream media needs something of that sort because they're not going to talk about Denver. You know, like Denver, nobody talks about Denver. Why? This is. For Denver, this is the greatest thing to happen. For them. It is, and they should be talked about. First but the mainstream ESPN ever. doesn't fuck with them, and LeBron's not in the playoffs anymore. So it's like we got to talk about Miami. That's what. That's how I look at it. At least, like I look at it through a lens of. I, I mean, it like no, they're definitely meat riding Jimmy Butler. I mean, he, like you said, he's not putting up all time great performances by any wow. means. It's just he he gets them. It's wins. the attitude. He has a great attitude. He you know he's a great locker room guy. <laughs> no, nah, but he he plays great ball. But like, it's not it's not near Dirk's run. Yeah, at, at, not even fucking close. Not Yon Not, not even better than Jokic's run this year. It's not better than Yon this play. Jokic's playoff performance is better than Jimmy's this bro, year. So how are we talking about Jimmy's? This is not even the best this year. We're, we're missing LeBron. That's the greatest playoff player we've ever seen. And th- like, that, like I said, they it don't is. have him to talk about. So, so why Jordan not be Jimmy Butler? 
because the Jimmy Jordan thing that everybody's running with on social media, they know how to get the clicks. Bro. They know how to get the likes. You know what I mean? Like they, they know what they're doing. <laughs> like, that's what I mean. That's, that's a nasty crazy. bag, but they're going to do it because they know it entices some or incites some conversation. It's just, it's just the greatest of all, greatest playoff run of that's all it, time. That's, that's what killed me. Like that, that was just glazing to, yeah. to the next level. I don't yeah. give a fuck. Who said that shit? Jay Williams, come yeah, on, well, Jay, Jay Williams, bro. I, I mean, come on, bro. Come on with the bullshit, bro. Yeah. Cut the shit, bro. We need Cameron on this motherfucking show. We need some. It is what it is up in this motherfucker. He'll tell you exactly what's good. But um, all right. So shit, let's move on from the finals. Mm. Let's talk about Kyrie staying in Dallas. Um, he he expressed basically Woke said it right. Yeah. So Kyrie like, wants I to stay. stay, and I want LeBron. Yeah, he said he wants LeBron. I, I look, Kyrie's staying for a couple reasons. One is the state of Texas, income free. I mean, tax tax income free, income tax free. Ah. And that and it's Texas. You don't have to worry about the the politics and all the other fuck shit that comes with being in New York or L.A. Right. So I mean, and you have Luca and Luca Doncic. I, I mean, that's a big part. He loves Luca. He loves Mark Cuban. He loves, you know, the environment around Dallas. And let's be honest, the Dallas Mavericks, they have a pretty awesome fan base. Like, they have loyal fans down there. And despite San Antonio having such a great franchise as well, Dallas has a great identity in the Texas area. So Kyrie being, a you know, a superstar down there alongside Luka, it just makes too much sense for him right now. Like, you look around the NBA, and it's like, where else can you see Kyrie? That's better than what Dallas has to offer him right now. So I think it's a good move for him to say that he wants to stay in Dallas. And I think it's a good guy move because he's going to get people on his side from the Texas area. And then he can kind of make his claim that, hey, I want LeBron. Is that something that I think could happen? I think the chances are very, very slim. I'd probably I say sub 10%. Slim. Same. But... I'm not, you know, I'm not nixing it because we're talking about LeBron James and we're talking about Kyrie Irving now, and Mark Cuban as well. Like, there's a lot of wizardry right. going ar- going on around here. I get, I get so. it, but I just can't see a situation where LeBron is actually like, nah, I'm leaving LA and I'm going to Texas. Like, I, I just don't like. I don't see it. I don't. I don't see. I put in my in the notes before the episode, like, what happens to AD in that case? Like, what is he just gonna tell AD, bro? I'm out. You yeah, know, I mean, I'll, I'll later, sure. But, I mean, he did like, it to the Heat. He uh, did it to the uh, first okay. Cavs. He's done I mean, it. No, you know? but this is different. Like, Ant- he would have to get traded. Ring, so that would like, be. Sure. I, I don't know. And the, the other factor for me would really be is uh, what the fuck is Dallas going to give LA for LeBron James? Powell? Yeah. <laughs> the Tim fuck? Hardaway Jr.? Like, Tim Hardaway Jr.? No, there's really their, not. Their, their future Knicks pick? Because the, the, the Knicks got their next pick. Yeah. That's that's over uh draft pick draft pick ten. Yeah, you just kind of. So what the fuck are they gonna give? You blew most of your assets on Kyrie Irving. You can't make two superstar trades like that and still have like you can't have your cake and eat it too. LeBron is LeBron. He is. You're right. Like, You're right. If LeBron's LeBron. like, I need to go to Dallas, trade me to Dallas, I would be like, okay, that ten percent chance has now gone up to forty percent because it's LeBron James. But at the end right? of the day, Rob Palenka still has to say, you know what? Yeah, I'll take that deal. And I just don't see a scenario where Dallas has enough assets to make it to LA like that. It just doesn't make sense. It would be a fleecing of a lifetime. Dallas would have to give up their picks all the way to 2030. Mm, not 2030, but you yeah, know what I'm here. saying. Like, they, they're getting the first, they're getting the next four, they would have to give the first rounds for the next four years. 2029, yeah, because, this is because they have the Knicks have their next pick. This is so. like my GM. You know what I mean? Like, that's how we're trying to make this up right now. And it just doesn't make sense. To me. It, it really does. And, and the new bargaining agreement is going to severely punish teams that try to get three max contracts. Huh. Like, to the point where you're not even going to be able to sign. You're not going to be able to make any loopholes. You're not going to be able to do anything. The CBA, this new CBA is stating that we're, 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 over these these three superstar teams we want to spread the wealth through all the markets we want an even nba the big three era is officially that shit is going to be over super over once that cba is is into play so yeah that's just another reason why i just can't see lebron going there 
Yeah, no, it just it, it would it wouldn't make sense. It, it really. Would. So, well, I mean, would they be favorites though in the West? Like, it, uh, if that's that the craziest is, part. Look, you put all right, Matt. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna call you out. You put does this make them instant champions? Yeah. Fuck no! It doesn't make them instant champions. Are we dead ass? I don't know. What They're, would their team be besides them three? You have Powell, Luka, LeBron, and Kyrie Irving. Bro, that's not Kyrie that's Irving. not that's two that's two uh, cones in in LeBron in old ass LeBron James. That's not a championship, bro. That's not a it's not a championship, bro. No, no way, no way. I don't think so. They're not better than Denver still. Probably not. They're not better than Denver still, in but my people, opinion. A lot of people out there think if you add LeBron James to a team, they are instant championship contenders. Contenders, that was, that maybe, but you said while. you said so instant champions. So not instant champions. Not yeah. even close. Everyone will follow LeBron. They'll probably get, you know, like Tristan Oop. Thompson. Or something. <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe Dwight Howard unretires when he comes back to Taiwan. Bring J.R. Smith back. Word. You know, like guys like that. Maybe Deion Waiters from over from the... Who knows? Maybe Ray Allen, Allen might unretire too. Shit. Richard Jefferson comes from behind the mic real quick. Shane Battier. Why not? Mm-hmm. Birdman, Mike Miller. Fuck it. Everyone counted the heat out, but thanks to Dak Prescott being an inspiration to John Jimmy Pena's and the heat, they're back at it. Thank you, Dak. <laughs> I know nasty, that was John Pena. Nasty, I know that's John Pena. Nasty trolling. Back. Nasty back. Not without the right bench, guys. At one point, LeBron made it, any team a title contender, but not anymore. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that, but I, I just had to ask the question. I had to ask the question. Her Draymond will follow. The Dallas? Ooh. It better be on a player on a, minimum, on a vet right? minimum. Yeah, not a ah, yeah. It, would be it right. have to it has to be with the new CBA. The only way players are gonna come over is on vet min. That's it. Not not even mid levels, minimums, minimum. That's the only thing you are gonna get off. They want an even league. And uh, Raheem makes a good point. Does Luca even want to stay in Dallas? Because he was he was he was very skeptical at the end of the season. Man, he was not happy with how. There's a lot. There's a lot of places he can go, man. But. Does he even know. want to stay in Dallas? I mean, next year will tell will tell you everything if he wants to stay or not. Yeah. Um. All I'm saying, he's a Knicks fan growing up. I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, but Luca especially. He's he was boys with KP, so that as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm not even are. speculating on on where he would go, but. The league is already scared of Wemby. Honestly, bro, I saw that video of, I think it was Kenny Lofton from the Grizzlies bodying oh, up Wemby. And it made me kind of concerned. <laughs> now, I, I, I can't lie. Look, like, Corey, Corey about to come in here with the Bro, game. bro. Lofton, well, is, Lofton is a big body. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. He's a little, you know, he's a little heavier. But listen, bro. All I was thinking about was when Lamanyama has to guard a Joel Embiid, a Nikola Jokic. He's not going to. Yeah, who's he What not? do you mean? He's not, he's not a center. He's not a center. So he's going to he's gonna be swift enough to move with these point guards side to side? Or will they want that much wear and tear on him no, to guard the guy with he's the gonna ball? Play the four, he's going to play the four, bro. He's going to play the four. He's going to play the four. four. Corey thinks I don't know why. Combo four. He's four. He's a four. Period. He's playing the four. And he's taking the ball up. He's positionless. <laughs> he's positionless. You think you think it, I'm I'm gassing? You think you think no, it's funny? He's taking the ball up. Get cooked defensively he's he's not going to get cooked defensively because he's not going to get back down. Like yeah, the heavier players. He's fucking 19 years old. Okay, and he's skinny as fuck. It's going to take time for him to build his frame. So yes, he will get bodied by a Joel Embiid. Yes, he will get bodied by certain players. But guess what? He's not going to. Popovich is not stupid enough to put Wemby against Joel Embiid. He's going to put Wemby against Tobias Harris. They're going to find him. Though. They're gonna find and him. they are going to fuck. Boy, Wemby's going to fuck them niggas up, You don't bro. think that Wemby and Yama being, you know, noted as the greatest prospect since LeBron or Luka, like, <laughs> like he has a target on his back now. Like, people are going to try and pick him out. I, I really think that 
we are underestimating just how much of an edge these guys have against guys coming into the league that are highly touted. Like a lot of people wanted to prove it to Luca when he first came in the league. A lot of people wanted to prove it to LeBron when he first came in the league. I don't know. I, I just think it's the same with Wemby. He falls. Yeah, Greg Popovich as coach. He could do. He's there's going to be a lot of things that he's going to be able to do. I don't know. Promise you. Wemby versus Chet. Oh my goodness. Now that's now that's a five that he'll be able to go against is a Chet. You know what I'm saying? Is he's if he's going to play a five, he's positionless. And so yes, he can't play the five if he needs to play the five. But it has to make sense. It has to make sense. You're not going to put him against Joel and B. You're not matching him up against Jokic. You're not doing that. It's not happening. But yes, there's going to be times where he does get bodied. He's 19 years old and he's skinny as fuck. Yes, it's going to happen. So it's going to take a couple years. That's all I want you to No. Mean. He's going to be the rookie of the year and he's going to be a fucking monster. He's going to get 22. I'm, I'm going to call it out. 22 and 12 averaging. Will he be with two blocks a game? Will he, Will he be, be a, a defensive? defensive yeah, that's exactly my question. Will he be a defensive mm, liability? No, because he's going to get two blocks a game. He's going to have steals. Blocking is not playing defense. Sure, you're right. But if he, like I said, there's going to be times where he gets bodied. It's going to be a lot but of times. But it's not going to be a lot of times. It's not going to be a lot of times. Because there's not a lot of players that's really going to be able to body him, body him. Do you know how strong huh? Kenny Lofton is? Do you understand how strong Kenny Lofton is? He's a power from He's a Kyle fucking Lowry. monster fucking... Shit, brick house, bro. So, Are you fucking kidding me? If a dude that's not even Kenny Lofton's doing that to a lot of niggas. Not, a G leaguer in the NBA, he's in a G leaguer. And y'all need to really watch some fucking tape, bro. Because all y'all niggas do is watch one little fucking bitch ass bro. clip. Oh, he's gonna get bodied in the paint. Oh, he's gonna get bodied in the paint. Kenny Loft, anytime Webby gets bodied once a game, niggas take that little fucking no context clip. Post it up. Oh, he's going to get fucking body. And Bro, then they don't show the very next possession where he goes down, takes the fucking ball up, and put, does a pull-up dribble off or from G-Leaders. 25 feet over niggas' heads like KD. Or G-Leaguers? On motherfucking G-Leaguers? On European players? I don't give a fuck. Overtime Elite? Overtime Elite is pro players, too. I don't give a fuck. What you talking about? That was a live fan fiction. Right there. <laughs> Ew. Um, Yo. Two blocks a game. Blocking isn't defense. Two red flags right there. Blocking is not defense. I want. I mean, it's part of the defensive game, <laughs> but you can be good at blocking and also be bad at defense. I hope that like makes sense to a lot of you guys. If if not, I mean, cool. And and let a coach put fucking good point, Ralph. Let a let a coach put. A slow ass center against Wemby. That boy gonna be tired by the end of the game. And Wemby is gonna air that nigga out, bro. He gonna air his ass out, bro. Period, bro. Well, Giannis, he's gonna have trouble against Giannis because he's baby Giannis. He's gonna have trouble against Giannis. But he's gonna be able to play against KD right now at his age. He's gonna be able to play. I mean, I don't think he gets matched up against Luka, really. But, like. He is positionless. What about LeBron? Yeah, he'll be able to play against him. AD. He'll probably get by by AD once or twice a game. Yeah. Once or twice a game. Mm Mm-hmm. 48 minutes. You talking about once Once or twice a game, yeah. Talking about once or twice. Well that's that's what you compare that's what you like to compare once once a game and then you you take the clip and throw it up and now all of a sudden you're concerned. Cooked by point cards, bro. What are you talking about? Getting cooked by point cards in the paint? Are you re- are yes, you I really am. watching him? Are it's you really watching him? Oh my God, bro! Yeah, you're, you're, you're Jeez Louise, bro! bro. You just That's chatting. Now watch. you're just chatting. I'm not. Bro. Now we're just chatting, bro. There's multiple games when he get baked on the perimeter. What are you talking about? Boy, bro? niggas, niggas like you. Are, are certified haters, bro. Anything that, that's good, that's about to come into the NBA, you find a reason bro, to hate them. You find a reason to be concerned. You find... There's no there's no such be. thing as a 100% guaranteed prospect. I, I guess what? Victor Wembanyama is. And I've never said nothing like that, ever. Damn, if he Gordon Hayward's his shit in the first two weeks of the season... Bro, all these oh, tall dudes man, coming never. in the league. All these tall dudes, his build, coming in the league and get hurt the first year. Yeah, nah, he's built like he's, his limbs are pretzel sticks. I'm really. They don't play like Wemby, though. They don't play like Wemby. Chet is a fucking, he's a skinny ass true center. Bitch ass true center. He's weak down there. He's frail down there. 
Webby plays perimeter ball with the best of them. He's taking the ball up. He's doing off dribble threes. He's doing putback dunks. He's blocking the fucking ball when when niggas is sleeping. Matt and Ed would be wetting themselves if he was going to New York. I'm not saying he's a bad prospect. He's the number one pick for a reason. He's an amazing, you know, player. I don't know, but it's just like there's like why is it all of a sudden that we're allowed to just crown somebody who hasn't stepped foot on an NBA court yet? I'm not doing that off rip like i think he's gonna be great yes but i'm not gonna do this like we've seen this with so many guys like anthony bennett bro he was like highly touted <laughs> and i'm not, not talking about a generational guy you're talking about you you're talking about in general anthony andrew bennett wiggins. was was terrible andrew was a wiggins. terrible pick andrew, andrew wiggins, wiggins, wiggins was very highly touted what about darko even like they are going back it, then. adam wiggins morrison wiggins. Wow, they do this all the time every couple years they Look. do this one thing I can say I'm really fucking good at is like analyzing talent coming into the NBA and coming into the NFL. I know when a player is going to be fucking good. I mean, I he's going to be good. No, he's, he's going to be, be no, he's going to be great. He's going to be the the best player in the league eventually. So he's come to the league yes. like LeBron did. When he retires, what, he what was LeBron's game? rookie stats? Crazy. They were crazy, but no, I really, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely like, curious. It was like 20. 22 and something? It was like 22. 22 and 8, right? 22. He's carrying a bum ass I team, say. Yeah. But I, yes, Wemby could absolutely get those numbers. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, it's a different NBA. Absolutely. Right fucking those games were ending like 85. And 85. on top of that, he's going to have 10 rebounds a game. He should. He should, he should All right. Should. Okay. It, plus 22 points a game. Plus two him. blocks a game. Well, we're talking about him being a and he could pass. Player. That's all. That's all we've been arguing. Be a defensive all right. Well, let's see what, what what happens defensively. We'll see what happens. I think Pop will be smart enough not to keep him in the paint against big centers. They have Jake. They have J- Jacob Pertl there for a reason. Jakob. Jakob Pertl. Yeah. So, I promise you, he'll be the starting five in that San Antonio lineup. All right. We will see. But all right, moving on from the NBA, we've got some news in the NFL that a Colts player, Isaiah Rogers, caught gambling. Now, this isn't just like a bet. This is apparently hundreds of bets placed last season. Crazy, crazy news. Now, I just I want to say the NFL officially has an issue with player gambling. It's officially a problem now amongst the league, and they have nobody to blame but themselves because when every other commercial is FanDuel, DraftKings, Bet365 getting shoved down your throat, what do you expect but for people to consume the product that you're putting out there? I agree. Yeah, no, Go ahead. I don't. They're grown ass men. No, you're not supposed to fucking gamble in the. In the uh... I'm talking about the NFL having an issue with it. I I know they're stupid as hell for even doing it. The you NFL know, like. A business. They're making too much money to be doing all that. And if they're going to do that, you would think it would be from an offshore bookie instead of going on FanDuel or going on fucking DraftKings Draft Kings with their social security number or their aunt's social security number. You would think they would go to like a Bavada or a fucking Steak or any of these other like discrete websites where you can actually do it offshore. And he was doing from 25 to $50. But I'm sure these were like parlays. You know they were parlays. But, like, why do that when you're making a million dollars a year? Nah, and I know he's probably making, what, 700 a year? He's younger. Yeah. He's probably, but, it's probably not all guaranteed. Uh, yeah, like that, sure. But, but, like, come on, dog. There's just so, I mean, Come on, on, bro. Tom Foolery, bro. Fucking stupid. If you're going to bet and you're a fucking player, do it offshore so you don't get caught. Stop being fucking stupid. And it just further proves the point that, like, there could be games fixed because of this shit. Yeah, well, it is players right gambling here. on on games. Yep, equals everybody else is gambling on games. Yeah, if the players are gambling, that means the refs are gambling. That means the coaches are gambling. They're just doing it smarter. This comment says it's in their contract. There's probability of them having inside information and placing these bets, and that's yeah. probably the reason why they don't allow players to do it. That makes sense. I agree with that, yeah. and they shouldn't because I I don't think any player, coach, any member of any organization in the NFL should be placing bets at all. Am I allowed to, if I'm an NFL player, am I allowed to place an NBA parlay? Like, is that cool? Or you, yes. You can? Okay. Yes. Just not literally, just not in that league. Okay. 
I wasn't sure the same if they're league. just like, yeah, we're not having you bet. But what's crazy, like boxing, for example, you can gamble on yourself. You can gamble you can gamble however you want if you fight in Vegas. You can gamble like Floyd Mayweather. That's how he made all of his money. He would bet the whole purse on himself. So if the purse was $40 million, he ran that $40 million right up to bet MGM. Even when he's minus, you know, 5000 doesn't matter. When he you're made sure. that much money on it, it doesn't matter. He made sure. Yeah. So, like, man, it, it's just so prevalent in the game now. It's like the, the um, what's the word I'm looking for? The integrity of the game, man, is shot. It's, it's, it's get, and it's only going to get worse. The integrity of the game is only going to get worse. But this leads me to say that, say this, Calvin Ridley is about to have a career year this year. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell you that right now. Calvin Ridley and Trevor Lawrence and the Jags are about to run it the fuck up this year. No, they're definitely about to be nice. I mean, other games. No, I'm that, really that division's excited. weak as fuck. Their only competition is the Colts. This is the stat for Trevor Titans. Lawrence. This is it for the Jags. Like this is this is the year and they defense, gotta turn it up. That defense is fast, man. They have a lot of speed over there on that defense. It's a lot of versatile guys that play like more than one position. You got a lot of names over there that you could put linebacker, safety. You know, I really like whatever whatever they've been building the past few years. Obviously, Dougie P, Super Bowl winning head coach. So. You got everything you want. It's time for Trevor Lawrence to take that next step. Now this is the year for the Jags. I'm telling you, I feel like they get past the first, like the first round and all that. Well, they did last year too, but they can make an actual run this year for sure. Doug oh, yeah. Peterson as their coach, like it's anything's possible, man. I'm telling you, nah, for sure, for sure. But all right, some other news in sports. Let's talk about it because this is going to change the dynamic of an entire sport. Live golf. PGA Tour merging together to form one golf business. As they said, this is going to be changing the game of the entire sport of golf, professional golf as we knew it. Do we think this is good or bad? I mean, I think it's good, but it depends on what the merge entails. Is Live going to be a PGA minor leagues? Are Are the Saudis able to pay the Live guys Four hundred million dollar contract still. Well, that's the these are the whole. These are the things that stipulations that are yet to come out. But apparently, yeah, I need to know the details. They have agreed on a on a deal that's going to completely change the game. So, and they did note. Somebody said I would be pissed if I was Tiger. They did note that guys like Tiger who have signed deals and whatnot already, they can once their season is over, you can go back to the other league now that they are you know, in unison together. You could go back to PGA Tour and play in a, one of those tournaments as well. So No, I, I like the idea of, you know, PGA, PGA not uh, discriminating against players that went to live anymore because PGA knew they were in trouble with that Saudi money. They offered Tiger, what, $400 million contract? Yep. And yep. he turned it down. Yeah. Because he was scared of the PGA and what they were going to do to him. So now, like, I feel like a lot of players are going to actually play in the Live tournaments now. But it's like, I don't know. It's, it's not a competition anymore. Is Live actually going to pay that type of money out anymore? And that, I, I think that's a problem if they did merge. And these players, these Live players are going to lose money. Or, you know, maybe those first contracts were to just woo people and wow people. Oh. I don't know. Is Live going to be the minor league PGA? Is or is Liv going to be like when when you're washed up from the PGA, you go on to live yeah. and have fun? Yeah, we'll you have know? to see how the dynamic kind of unfolds and all the details that come out and how they're going to run things. But I think it's going to be really interesting to see how golf kind of evolves after this, especially, I mean, I know one thing for sure. My kids will be golfers. <laughs> like, I, I go play golf. You know, football, not it. Go, you know, get yeah. some hacks in at the driving range because I want that live deal. So Yeah, I think Liv bitched up, though, at the same time. I think they bowed down to PGA right there. I feel like Liv had the upper hand. I mean, obviously, they didn't have the best golfers in the world. But with the right money, they would have, and with the consistency, they could have eventually flipped the PGA. For real. But I feel like they kind of bowed down and bitched up, in my opinion. But... 
we'll see. I gotta see the details on on the merge and see what kind of dynamic they got going on. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um. Yeah, I mean, shit. <laughs> oh, yo, yo, let's talk about Degrom. Jacob Degrom torn UCL. Yep. Another Tommy John surgery. Death taxes and Degrom injuries. Um, yeah, not surprising at all. If you've watched Jacob Degrom the past two, three seasons, all signs were pointing towards something of the sorts. Whether it was a rotator cuff injury, whether it was a UCL injury, all signs were pointing that something was going on. And now he's finally getting Tommy John. Now. Do we think that this will make him better as a pitcher? Because we've seen guys come back from Tommy John injuries and throw harder, say they feel better. Is Jacob DeGrom a guy we think could come back and you know still be at the top of the throne in MLB? Well, he did it 10 years ago or however long ago. Oh, when he, you already get Tom, had, he already had Tommy John surgery before, yes, ooh. in 2010. And he's had three, four shitty seasons with injuries and six really good seasons. But now, yeah. Tommy John at, what, late 30s, I'm thinking it's a, different game. it's a whole different ball game, you know, and that's, I mean, Tommy John surgery is the equivalent of a torn ACL yeah, in, in, uh, in the NFL. So, I mean, coming back twice from it, it's going to make it super tough. Do I think he, he'll still be able to pitch at a high level? Yes. But do I think he'll be 100% healthy ever again? No. no. And do I think the Mets made a good decision by letting him walk? Yes. But did we make a good decision by signing fucking Verlander to $81 million for two years? No. It happened. But the Mets had to move on somehow, and I feel like we made the right move for moving on. Yeah. Because this would have been it, and it would have been headlines. You, you notice how uh, this DeGrom shit just went and gone in an hour, the news. Yeah. It, it's gone like the fucking wind. When you're texting. If he was on the Mets... And they would have got reported to have another Tommy John. Boy, I would still be getting texts right now. Yeah, the sky would be falling. 100%. No, that's not New York, you know, that New York tax right there. It's the definition of it. So, I mean, that, it, there's really nothing else to do if you're Jacob DeGrom or, you know, the Mets right now. They're both kind of just sitting on their hands waiting. So, it's really all you can do with a payroll like the Mets have. It, you really can't make too many moves that are going to make you better like that. So, I don't know. Yeah, man. Verlander just has to step the fuck up. That's yeah. that's all it's really coming Even down Scherzer to. Too. Scherzer too. Scherzer's, Scherzer's okay. getting it around. He's getting there. He's getting there. He's he's getting in his bag. And I mean, Verlander isn't even doing that bad either. He had two really bad starts, but I don't know. It's still early in the season. It is. It's incredibly early, but you know, a lot of guys are definitely looking. I don't know. I saw a debate. I think it was Divide Live was talking about it, and they said people who say the season starts in June are stupid but i'm not gonna lie i've been tuned out of baseball just being that the nba finals is such i'll know, pay attention to baseball until the nba finals are over yeah period i don't give a fuck i mean like, i've had tickets to a couple yankee games and i was just like yo I, i just i'm not really interested like that. i have not gone to a game yet this year and i will not until the nba finals are over i don't i don't pay attention like i do pay attention i know the, the, the mets record is what 30 and 30 whatever i know who's playing bad who's playing good but I'm not watching every single Mets game on a daily basis until July. Mm-hmm. It is what it is, you know? Who I think is winning the World Series this year? Who knows? Yeah, it's at still this wide point, open. It's, it's so... 180 games. Or 162 games, I'm sorry. 162. And they played 60. They got 100 games left. Yeah. Yeah, That's, yeah it's a long season. It's a long season. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So we'll be back talking, you know, much more MLB as things heat up down the stretch and as things heat up even around the all-star break and the trade deadline. So, you know, right now it's just way too hard to tell. You got teams like the Padres who have guys, you know, up and down the roster. You got that, your Tatis, your Machado, you got your uh, Xander Bogarts, you know, you it's everywhere, Juan Soto. But the thing is, these are all great players, but that team has no identity. You know, they, they don't have uh, one goal, it seems like. So, I don't know. I'm interested to see how things unfold with teams like that. You always have the Dodgers in the mix. The Tampa Bay Rays are obviously absolutely incredible as well. Um, the Orioles are doing well. The Orioles are balling out. Shout out to Imain. The Orioles, they're doing their thing. And, um, yeah, I think that's really all you could say about the scene of the MLB right now. The Phillies are a little bit disappointing. The Braves are still being the Braves. They're staying above water, but they haven't been absolutely spectacular. Um 
I don't I don't really know anybody else that's like I mean one other thing that happened in the MLB actually Alec Manoa got option which is crazy because this is an all-star pitcher just last season he had such a bad first two months mm. of the MLB season that Toronto optioned him down to the minor leagues it happens man it happens to the best woman in the MLB everybody even the best players go down even for like rehab stints and stuff like that but oh, like yeah. from bad play like it that's that's crazy i mean i remember being a kid and going and seeing ryan howard at the blue club Cole ham you know that was a big deal mm. they were sick and right there in your home like you know hometown like why not yeah all right so i got one more thing uh leonard actually posted this in the group and i thought it'd be an interesting debate one player has to go and, Pretty sure you guys saw it too, but um, Bam, Cat, Sabonis, and Jaron Jackson. Mm-hmm. One has to go. All four of them here. For me, they, they look suck. It's got to be. We're all on the same play. level. They're all on the same I'll level. Keep, I'll keep They're in the Everybody same tier else. of power forward slash centers. It's Bam. It's it's Bam. Right? <laughs> Is it, bro? Like all the other guys. At least give you like they give you both sides of the ball at, at a way better de- degree than Bam, right? Like I'm taking Sabonis, his playmaking is Sabonis different. in the playoffs kind of disappeared, man. He kind of disappeared in the playoffs. I can't lie. I I would have said Bam, but now I'm looking at Sabonis kind of crazy. I'm looking at Cat kind of crazy. I, I'm like I'm, all all four I'm of these guys are suspect in their own ways. Sharon Jackson Jr. I feel like doesn't get looked at as. The- being on the same level as those guys though because he's not like he's a number two i guess you could say for that team but his offensive bag is very minimal so i don't know who's the number two on memphis desmond bain so like even Mm. then look at everybody else around him on that list and they're all either ones or twos on their team so it's like are we considering him on that same level as them is jaron jackson the one that gets put out or is his defense that good to elevate him above those guys yeah, they're all, I they mean, don't move the needle for me at all. Anyway. None of them do, but one has to go. Which one is the worst? It's gotta be Bam. Man. It's gotta be Bam. It has to be Bam. It has to be Bam because Bam can have his games. Like, don't get listen. Just because he had a solid game too, Bam has his playoff games where he gives you eight, five, and four, <laughs> and it's just like, yo, this guy's my number two, yo. Like, I can't, I can't with this guy. I can't. And like I said last episode, a lot of his game is moving screens. Yeah. I'm going with Sabonis. That motherfucker did not show up in the playoffs. His bag was extremely limited. Extremely limited against the Warriors. And there's not even nobody big like that. He, I, uh-uh. Draymond? We're not, we're not saying Draymond gave good defense there in the whole. Uh, I the whole mean, he wasn't doing anything. Chest. He wasn't doing. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't doing factor. anything good. I mean, Offense, defense, it didn't matter. He he got he got fucked up in that series. Okay. All right. I'm going with Sabonis. Sabonis. Ed, who do you say? How to pick one. Bam. All right. Bam, bam, bonus. Bam, bam, bonus. All right. I think that wraps it up, though. I mean, yeah. shit, man. We'll be back next week. Mo Sports TV. I appreciate everybody for sliding through. Make sure you get a Mo Sports t shirt, too, by the way. Yes, Make sure sir. you get a Mo Sports t shirt. We'll be back to uh, talk about some more NBA finals next yes, week. Sir. Let's get it.